It may not be the greatest rock and roll in the world, but it's certainly the most controversial. One London newspaper called them the most aggressive, nasty band ever. They're the Sex Pistols and they're led by Johnny Rotten. And they've already been barred from most of the leading London clubs, both because of their music and because of the violence they bring with them. And yet this group are leaders of a whole new teenage cult that seems to be on the way to being as big as mods and rockers were in the 60s. The cult is called punk. The music, punk rock, basic rock music, raw, outrageous and crude, like their fan magazine Sniffing Glue, which is produced and stapled together by two young punks from Deptford. Punks have multicoloured hair, vampire makeup, ripped t-shirts held together with safety pins, swastika armbands, pink plastic trousers and tight leather jeans. You can't buy this sort of gear in Marks and Sparks, so you have to go to shops like Sex in the King's Road. That's where the Sex Pistols got together when they were just four teenagers on the dole, and the owner, Malcolm McLaren, became their manager. Now he's got them a large recording contract with EMI, and a whole underground punk culture has begun to emerge. Other punk groups who've sprung up after the Sex Pistols, like The Damned, don't want to use the big record companies. They're recorded by Stiff Records, who operate from a lock-up shop in Notting Hill. Stiff say they can't offer big money, but they can give punk rock bands the break other companies wouldn't dream of. But while recording's becoming easier, finding places to play is becoming harder, thanks to the reputation punks are getting as troublemakers. The 100 Club in Oxford Street has banned all punk groups after an incident at a punk gig where a girl was nearly blinded by a broken bottle. And at the ICA two weeks ago, a boy had his earlobe bitten off by his girlfriend, driven to frenzy by a punk group appropriately called Clash. Mark and McLaren, you discovered and managed the group. Now, what about the accusation that you're more into chaos than anything else? Well, that's an accusation by people who really don't understand what kids want. Kids what want excitement. They want um, things that are going to transform what is basically a very boring life for them right now. And music, young rock music, is the only thing they have that they thought that they controlled. And if you look in the charts, they don't really have anything to do with it. Well, what's wrong bands with the Bands like Stones these, Mahoo? bands, the Sex Pistols or whoever, whatever other young bands are around right now, are actually... Um, making music from the streets. They're actually, it's actually music born out of a frustration to get something across that is of their own. All right, music. You're also trying to shock everyone. Your clothes are bizarre. What about the word punk? If you look it They're up in the dictionary... They're only bizarre to old people. They ain't bizarre possibly, to young kids. Possibly. I, I don't have a safety pin through my nose. What about the word punk? It means worthless, nasty. Johnny Rotten, are you happy with this word? No, the press gave us it. It's their problem, not ours. We never called ourselves punk. Which bands do you think are really old hat now? Are you against the Stones and the Who? Sounds like that. Yes, of course, because they're established. They just do not mean anything to anyone. Well, your following has got a reputation for being rather dangerous. A lot of accidents have happened. How do you feel about this? Honest reactions, really, in the audience itself. I mean, God, you know, if a few glasses fly around an audience, that isn't so bad. It's perhaps a lot better than kids sitting down doing nothing and twiddling their thumbs. With us also is Giovanni D'Adamo. Now, I know you're very worried by the Sex Pistols. Why? Well, not very worried, but there are aspects of what they do or what they provoke that worry me. You know, I think if you go out and out to provoke people like they've done, People react, right? And it's all very well for Malcolm to say it's good for bottles to fly through the air or mugs. But if they hit you in the head, or if they hit Johnny in the head... You heard them. They're angry and they're frustrated. Now, do you think their music is worthwhile? Um, I've enjoyed it at times. There's times when it strikes me as a bit derivative. I mean, the great danger with the Pistols is that they can be boring, you know? Their attitude can be boring. It can become boring. I mean, it's not... Like I say, just destruction for its own sake is is dull, ultimately, you know, it doesn't offer any hope, it doesn't really want to change, it's just saying, you know, we don't like this, we, we're different, look at us, you know, that's just attracting attention to yourself. I, I think it should be constructive revolution if it's going to be revolutionary, like... You mean establish... You have to destroy in order oh. to create, yes, you know you that. Mean. You All have right. to break well, it down different? in order to and build it up again in a different form. How different is your revolution to the one that occurred in the 60s with groups like the Stones and the Who? 
How different? Hmm. Well, you don't really compare the two. We're living in different times. Kids are far more sophisticated. They're far more conscious of medias. They're far more conscious of film, television, um, going to see rock concerts. The Stones came about at a time when rock and roll hadn't really got off the ground. You're talking the bands coming 15 years hence. It's far harder for a young band today to stick its neck out and say something constructive as it, as it was for the Stones in 1960. You know, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of established people, a lot of people who hate the Sex Pistols, certainly in the established music business, certainly regarding people who promote venues. We have a lot of problems getting to the kids. We'll eventually make it. It doesn't matter what they think, because basically it's that kid in the street. It's what he likes. He will change public opinion. It won't be the journalists and it won't really be the music industry. It will be the kid on the street, because he's the guy who buys the record. Does it matter if the record doesn't sell? There's no question it will sell.